Hello, it's Jimmy here, everybody. I'm looking at a VW Turan here, 2 litre diesel. Okay, so this has an engine management light on. It's done 174,000 miles and it has literally just came to me from another garage. The driver on, and owner of the vehicle has driven it here to me. So he said it's had the EGR cooler removed and the EGR valve uh, to have them cleaned up, but he said he's been told that after removal of the parts, uh, they weren't blocked and the mechanic says he doesn't know what to do from there because he doesn't have any equipment to clean the DPF and that's what it needs so let's have a look and see what's going on okay I've got my launch Eurotab 3 scan tool we'll go to diagnostics and we're gonna go to ECM Read default code. So it's a P200 efficiency below threshold. Uh, now that is common on the Audis. I haven't really seen a lot of VWs with that code. Uh, it's common on the Audis for the EGR cooler. Uh, but let's go to data stream. See what we're looking at here. Airflow from the mass sensor, nine grams per second. Particle filter pressure. 51 HPAs or millibars is the same thing. If we switch that to millibars, it'll be 51 as well. Uh, 52 grams of soot, 9 grams in the DPF. Uh, let's go back to different data streams, see if we can find any low pressure EGR data. Uh, low. Pressure. EGR. Let's see what's differential pressure ratio, low pressure EGR. Exhaust flow of the EGR. Temperature sensors, uh, let's have a look at those items there. Differential pressure 12.5. Try and compare these after we do a clean, maybe. So we've got 0 Three point eight millibars, twelve point eight kilograms an hour on there. So we've got fifty two millibars of pressure in the DPF, so we'll try and get that reduced. Let's go back to the live data for that. Read the codes, let's go back to there. Got the live data straight there for that. There we go. Get that switched over. Okay, so we just removed the engine cover there. So over here behind this little heat shielded cover, we're gonna have two sensors. Uh, one goes to the EGR cooler, this one, and this one goes to the DPF. They're both the same sensor, and apparently these have already been changed as well. So what I'm gonna do is, we've got a little bit of AdBlue crystallization there, you see that? Not going to worry about that right now though. Um, going to remove this hose, remove the bolt from here and we'll get some DPF cleaning fluid injected down here. Okay so I've got here a T30 Torx and we'll get that inserted into here. And just get that bolt loosened out and we'll uh, remove that. Just place it up there. Grab that sensor, just pull it away from the housing there and we just need to disconnect that little clip down there pair of pliers let's grab it there and give it a little twist pull it down so we're going to release the plug here by pressing that tab so if we press the tab inwards pull it out it'll come off and we can 
give this a twist left and right just try and keep it dead straight you don't want to you don't want to be twisting it left and right like that because I mean to the side basically because you, you might snap the plastic tube this piece you don't want to snap that off now if these things are being a bit stubborn I like to use this little tool here it's brilliant it's a trim tool and you just get it over the holes you can see there it's pushing her off nice and easy so now we've got that sensor out of the way we'll just put that over there as well I'll connect that back to the plug because now it's out of the way we can leave that connected to the plug because we can't just yank on it with the electrical cable on it okay I've got this DPF cleaning gun here and the launch UK DPF cleaning fluid so they're both from launch to gun and that obviously my launch writing has worn off it's probably seen about a thousand DPF cleans in the last year so now I'm gonna connect into this hose that goes to the DPF now these VW vehicles I've mentioned loads of times before the DPF sits right up here so it's actually higher than the cylinders now if you fill the DPF up too much with the fluid of course gravity will take it course and it will go into the cylinders and you'll you'll uh, hydro lock the engine so I'm not going to put too much in with the engine off I'm going to give it maybe a five to ten second burst of cleaning fluid and that'll do we'll let that sit for about five minutes and then we'll do the rest with the engine running so the only thing about doing it this way is I can't show you live on my uh, diagnostic machine can't show you the chart as it's coming down because we're going to have the engine running while we're doing this uh, and the sensor is going to be disconnected so once we get the sensor connected back up we can then watch the live data of the, the dpf pressure now hopefully this is going to clean down to where it should be this car is a taxi so i know it's done an awful amount of low my uh, low miles journey not low mileage uh, low speed journeys uh, around town and obviously idling a lot so this car has done an awful lot of self regenerations and the mileage is very high so there's going to be ash build up now with, with high mileage cars you know they're not always as successful as a low mileage car will clean the DPF because the DPF can be damaged melted or just full of ash and cleaning them is not always successful but we'll see with this one Okay, engine is now running. I'm just going to squeeze the trigger on this. We'll hold this trigger squeezed until all of the fluid is gone. I'm just going to hold it in one continuous, one continuous spray. Okay, now we've disconnected that. Now we'll just make sure that that pipe is cleared out of any any of the suds that are coming out. Make sure that they've all cleared before we get this sensor reconnected okay now back in the vehicle I'm gonna hold the revs up the max on this is 2500 rpm so now we've got the DPF pressure on the chart here we're just watching it come down I'm holding the revs up at 2500 rpm I don't think I showed the revs at, at full revs before uh, before I done this but yeah anyway we had 50 at idle, 55 at idle, something like that. See where we can get it down to. Looks like it's coming down nice and quickly, so good news. Now, with these DPFs, I know I talked about it may not be successful. So the reason behind that is obviously because this car has done 175,000 miles driving around town as a taxi and with that type of driving you're going to get a lot of soot building up and then a lot of regenerations the more the more regens your car does the more ash it's going to build up and over time that ash will turn into like hardened ash which is a, like a like a charcoal and it's it's basically impossible to clean that um, so there is just a worry about mm, is it you know is it blocked up with ash and are we going to be able to clean it with this amount of miles on it if it's a fairly new car and it's done high mileage I'm not really worried but if it's a car that's 10 years old or 8 years old and it's done 200,000 there is a bit of a risk of that that maybe the clean might not work but looks like we're having good success here 
57 millibars so we are now within perfect range that is, is exactly where I'd like to see it somewhere around 50 millibars so it looks like it's leveling out a bit there now it doesn't really want to go much lower than that let's let it idle down now see where the idle pressure is at 14 millibars it's a little bit higher than I'd like it. We'd like to get that under 10 if we can. Let's go down to 13 millibars there. Well, yeah, we'll hold the revs on it for another minute or two. It's only been on f for what, one or two minutes there at the minute. Just have a look at the other data here again. Soot mass calculator is still at 9.2 grams. Let's go back to the data stream, try and find some of that low pressure EGR again. So EGR, differential pressure of the EGR, exhaust mass flow of the EGR. Pressure correction, I think that looks about all of the sort of pressure items that we have there. I'll have to go back on the video and have a look at what we had before, what these readings were. But now we're going to take the vehicle on a test drive, but I suppose before we do that we're going to have to get these lights cleared off, otherwise we're going to be in limp mode. So let's exit the live data, uh, turn the engine off. So now we're going to come to guided functions for this VW. Special functions don't normally work on these. Uh, VW Turan. 2016 engine code, all engine codes, engine electronics, guided functions, uh, select model manually. Uh, Euro 6, I think that one. Adapt diesel particle values. Reset the learned values of the differential pressure. Reset the learned values of the pressure sensor bank two. Reset number three. Reset the learned values of the particle filter. Okay, so that hasn't worked. Okay, so I'm going to try it this way through the special functions. Uh, high pressure pump, particle filter replaced. This one? No, that's not working either. Okay, so what I'm going to do for now is just clear the fault code. The grams of soot weren't really high anyway, so hopefully we won't need to do a full reset on that. Let's see what happens if we start the vehicle up now. Really annoying these VWs, they're really difficult to get the uh, adaptions of the DPF reset. Okay, so these are at 7 grams at the minute, so we're going to take it on a little bit of a drive and see if that decreases. So we'll drive it for a couple of miles. And I can see there that the uh, grams of soot are reducing, we're down to 6.8. Okay, so we're back from a test drive there, we've done maybe 6 to 8 miles I'd say. So it's a bit of a weird one this, where we have the 60 millibars pressure on revs, but we have the 13 millibars at idle, it's not getting any lower unfortunately. The soot grams have come down to 4.5, but we haven't been able to get the idle pressure down, down below 10. So I do think there is some damage to the DPF and it's possible that this fault can return because it's not really uh it's not the idle is not as low as i'd like it to be so that's it it's all finished on the Turan, and see you on the next video